Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're doing another Buildzoid versus PC Part Picker video. Um, this one, in my opinion, is pretty stat patty because I, it's like it's B550. Lots of people are very interested in B550. I'm kind of annoyed by that because I'm far more interested in Z490, and yet my Z490 content gets like no bloody views. <laughs> so here's some stat padding for you. Um, and then we're going back to the Z490 content because I really don't like, like B550 is just not that interesting, but... Anyway, so the the plan for these builds was just B550 builds. Um, these are budget. In my opinion, you could also do like B550 motherboards with uh, like 3900Xs or 3950Xs. Um, the thing is, like, I don't really get what a 3700X is supposed to do, right? It's not as, well, I guess if you need like a workstation, like if you need a weak sauce workstation, then I guess the 3700X makes sense. But otherwise, it's like if you're buying a gaming system, you should buy a 10600K. And if you can't afford a 10600K, you should just buy a 3600 instead. So, um, yeah. And so these are like gaming builds based around the sort of very cost-effective Ryzen CPUs like the 3600 and the 3300X. Um, and then maybe in the future I'll do some like B550 plus uh, 3900X plus or 3950X uh, lists as well. But these are more budget-oriented. So... Yeah, um, and basically the idea was, like, I just go on PC Part Picker and see what I can throw together right now, which, honestly, is very difficult. Like, especially, like, motherboard selection on B550 currently really, well, it's not great. It's not like the lineups for B550 are even that great to start with, either. Like, if we look at this, oh, it's actually, today it's a lot better than it was when I, when I started this list, but, well, I wouldn't, no, that's a B450. Oh, that's, I'm an idiot. There we go. B550. No, no, X470. There, B550. Yeah, so as you can see, the B550 motherboard selection currently is terrible because uh, motherboards, I, I'm assuming most of them are stuck in shipping or they all sold out and now they're still, and now we're waiting for the next shipment. So, uh, yeah, there's not a lot of choice in terms of motherboards. Um, but yeah, I decided, hey, let's, let's see what I can throw together considering the very limited choice. And also, similar situation with power supplies. Like, power supplies right now are a complete disaster, right? Like, um, um, yeah, <laughs> this, this is fine. <laughs> this is great. Um, I'm, yeah, so power supplies are a horrible, horrible situation right now. Like, where are all the Seasonic ones, right? Like, literally, where are the Seasonic ones? Like, this is $120-ish, and I don't see a single... And it's not like I'm saying Seasonic is the, the one true manufacturer. It's just, like, you know, where where are the budget Seasonic options? Where are, uh, like, a lot of the more cost-effective even... Like these aren't even cost-effective. These are, like, $100-plus PSUs. Um, like, yeah, so a lot of the... P like, the PSU selection right now is kind of terrible. Um... So it was kind of challenging to put together these parts lists, considering that, yeah, the, the selection for motherboards is not... Well, the motherboard part actually made it easier because there's not that many boards to choose from, but the PSU situation is a disaster. So anyway, the builds are $920 for, like, the, the top-end one, and I actually really like this. Funnily enough, this right here, if you throw this together, it has more gaming performance than the system that's currently recording this video. In fact, if you overclock the 3600 a bit, you'll probably have more multi-threaded performance than the system currently recording this video. Uh, isn't that fun? Anyway, then we have this build right here for a little under $800, which uh, I think this technically still, yeah, this still would have more gaming performance, but it would lose on multi-threaded at this point. And this also, well, this would actually about match my daily system on gaming performance, which is just like, my daily system is garbage. But at least, like, it's built from spare parts. So what do you, ex like, well, it's built from what I consider spare parts. So, you know, what, what can you expect? Anyway, um, which is, like, that's kind of depressing that you could literally build a similar, well, admittedly I have way more RAM, so, you know, work workstation app, like, I need more RAM because of what I do, but yeah, the sheer, just gaming performance, you don't need 32 gigs of RAM, 16 is fine. Um, so, let's get into it. This first build, we have the Ryzen 5 3600 because it's the most cost-effective gaming CPU you can currently buy. Also, the chip's gone up in price since the last I've seen it. Yeah, it's gone up in price. Oh, well, sometimes it's cheaper. Um, actually, a lot of the time it can be a bit cheaper than that. 
Um, then we have this cooler here. The cooler is there because a lot of the recent uh, Ryzen 5 3600s that you buy have really good silicon quality, and AMD ships the Ryzen 5 3600 with the Wraith Stealth, which is a joke. Um, yeah, that, I mean, yeah, technically the CPU is a 65 watt TDP, and it has a 95 degree temperature limit. So all you need to do is put a block of aluminum on it that keeps it at that 95, temp 95 degree temperature limit no matter what. But I, I, I would like a better cooler. And that's exactly what the, the ID, like th this is going to be, like th this is actually a really nice 120 millimeter cooler. I'm gonna link a re review to that down in the description of the video. That's actually a surprisingly capable 120 millimeter cooler. And it's also only around $26. At the time that I first made the list, it was $24.99, but it looks like, yeah, it's gone up a little bit, but that's still, like, that's still a great price because uh, the Hyper 212 currently is like three or uh, $35. So, actually, wait. Ah, uh -huh, I don't know what to, wait. Um... Okay, so that's actually not up here. Whatever, like, Hyper 212 is more expensive and this, like, significantly more expensive. And this is actually on par, if not better, in terms of performance uh, to the Hyper 212 and significantly cheaper. So that's a great cooler. Uh, then for the motherboard for this build, I went with the B550M Aorus Pro, which this is actually, like, for the 3600, that board's pretty overkill. But it is a nice motherboard, right? And you don't just, like, there's also not much choice right now in terms of motherboards, right? It's like, what else would you buy um, for a B550? Like, specifically, if you limit yourself to the B550 chipset, like, what else would you buy? Um, there's the Pro, and then there's the Elite. And the Elite is not terrible, but it's definitely worse than the Pro. So, actually, no, this, this is pretty terrible, but... Um, yeah, it's like, so I, I'd go with the Pro in that scenario. I would avoid the B550MA Wi-Fi. Like, this this board is garbage. That is literally worse than the Elite, which I already don't like. Well, this is worse. Um, and the B550M Steel Legend, like, that's a perfectly good board, but that's $155. And I was aiming to, to keep these kind of, like, the thing is, that's a board that I would pair with, like, a 12-core, an 8-core, not a not a not a six right like that's really unnecessary to get such a nice board for such a like the 3600s even if you're overclocking it's not going to pull that much power the only reason we need a better heat sink than what amd ships it with is because the thermal density is ridiculously high so you know ryzen's naturally run kind of hot even if they're not pulling a lot of juice um and so yeah the motherboard here is actually really like even an a core would be perfectly good on this board um and in terms of feature set, I mean, you have a really nice rear I.O., you get Q flash, um, VRM is, it's not the nicest, VR, like, depends on your standard. By low-end motherboard standards, this is a pretty reasonable VRM. By high-end motherboards, it's awful, right? But, yeah, so, okay, VRM. Um, I'm not a fan of the PCIe slot layout, though that's not, I don't believe that is a concern in this configuration, right? This card's just a two-slaughter. Uh, wait a minute. Is it? No, it's not. Okay. Yeah. So this is, I like, there's a lot of B550 motherboards that'll put your X16 GPU slot down one slot. And basically what that means is if you have a GPU that's more than two slots, you're not going to be able to use your third PCIe slot, which is really dumb in my opinion. But you know, if you're doing just a gaming build, you're probably not going to have anything there. But if you want to have a GPU and a capture card, you're screwed. You want a GPU, well, really, if you want a GPU and anything else that goes into a PCIe 4X slot, you're screwed. So that's kind of the, the I, but again, like, there's not really better options um, for now, at least, in terms of motherboards, because there's just, they're not available. So, yeah, the pros in there. The memory kit, um, this is really cool. So G-Skill is now selling 3,600, admittedly really loose timed kits, but 3,600 nonetheless at under $70, which is amazing. And they also have this option as well. So this is 3600 CL18, but that's 182222. So the actual performance difference between these two kits should be non-existent. They should perform about the same because this is 192020. So this actually has the slightly tighter TRCD and TRP. 
Um, whereas this has ever so slightly tighter cast latency, but worse DRCD TRP. Now, with either of these kits, the 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 so the cool the reason why I went for either of these kits is that they're 3600. So you're gonna get your full speed FCLK. The main concern with either of these kits is that they are lottery bins, as in you are going to get so many different chips in these. They could be CJR, they could be DJR, they could be Samsung CDI, which is garbage, awful, terrible, the worst thing. Like, Samsung CDI is the replacement for BDI. It is god-awful. Like, worst thing Samsung has made that I'm aware of. It has no voltage tolerance, it doesn't tighten up properly, it's horrid. Um, so... Yeah, CDI is trash, and there's a very good chance you'll get it in one of these kits. However, um, it still runs 3600, so you still get the full speed, like you still get your FCLK up to, to 1800 megahertz, and that's such a massive performance advantage over something like a 3200CL16 that it's worth it. If there was a nice like 3466CL16 kit at around similar prices, then I would have gone for that, but there isn't, so... Yeah, 3600 with uh, with a chance of Samsung CDI is uh, better than being stuck at lower speeds. That's that's the way I look at that. Because potentially if you buy a bad 3200CL16... Like, the thing is, a 3200CL16 could still be Samsung CDI, and now it's also, like, it's also binned worse. So, you don't want that. Like, you don't want... Like, you don't want 3600 C... Uh, you don't want 3600 C die. But what you want even less is 3200 CL16 C die. Because that's just worse. Um, so, yeah, that, that's how this kit ended up in here. So, C die could potentially show up in these, which is the main sort of downside. Um, and they can also be Micron Rev E. And Rev E is perfectly good. DJR is actually... As far as I know, DJR is pretty damn good. I've still not gotten a chance to test any. CJR is solid as well. And then it's like, yeah, if you get Samsung CDI, well, you lost the silicon lottery. Um, or more like the memory chip lottery, which... Uh, but, you know, if, if you're buying cheap memory kits, like, that's always a problem. And that's a problem with either of these. Like, both the C uh, CL19... Well, actually, I think the tighter TRCD on this might be slightly leaning towards better quality. Um, or better, better chips most of the time, but even then, it's like, either of these is, like, you're gonna get good XMP performance, and then overclocking is just gonna be a mess, because the memory chips are gonna be all over the place. Anyway, so that's the memory kit, and this memory kit ends up being featured in every single build, because why would you get anything else? Um, like, if you want, like, yeah, why would you get anything else? Like, there are better kits that'll cost more, but that's, like, the goal here is to keep this, you know, cost-effective, so, um, yeah, I, I would go with this, because this is one of the cheapest 3600 megahertz kits you can get, and, well, at least it's 3600, you know, so it really, like, the it stops you from getting the really bad stuff that ends up in, like, 3200CL16 or, or lower bins, so... Anyway, um, then for the SSD, we have the Crucial BX501 terabyte. Um, I'm going to link to a review to that down in the description. Basically, so my logic for the SSD here is, because um, potentially somebody would be like, oh, you could get a faster SSD, like a smaller, faster SSD, and then a bigger, and then like a one terabyte hard drive. And the thing is, that in my opinion is stupid, because now you need to like, constantly fi do file management to make sure that your important stuff is on your fast SSD and not on the giant, like, slow hard drive. So in my opinion, like, in in my builds, my priority would be to first get as much of the everything onto an SSD. And the reason why I, I do this is because, like, I look at my personal bit build, I have a 500 gig OS drive that's an SSD. I am very not happy with the fact that it isn't a terabyte. Let's just put it that way. So, yeah, terabyte of SSD, and then you can start, you know, adding, like, HDDs for really bulk storage or something. But I wouldn't limit myself to a small SSD. Like, because then it's just, like, but... Like, like, it just forces you into deciding, like, oh, do I want my want this game with long loading times on the SSD, or do I want it on the HDD? Because a lot of the time, the games that have a really long loading time are also really bloody big, right? So... So they take up a lot of space, and then it's like, but my small SSD can't hold that many of them. And it's just like, I don't want to deal with those decisions, just have a single one terabyte SSD. 
Um, and this one's pretty decent and cheaper than the usual MX500 that I go for. But I would have also got, got like, alternatively, I would have gone for the MX500. Um, anyway, for the GPU, Sapphire Radeon RX 5600 XT Pulse. Because, uh, well, I'm going to leave a link to a hardware unboxed uh, video that rounds up all of the different 5600 XTs. This one's pretty damn good. It's got a good cooler. Um, it's you know, and the performance is fine, and really, that, that's, like, the main thing with GPUs, and the PCB, I think, is roughly a reference 50, like, it's not, like, they've not done anything wrong with the PCB on this card either, um, so, yeah, you're not really, like, you can technically get cheaper, slightly cheaper 5600 XTs, it's just, like, you might get worse coolers and that kind of thing, and so it's just, like, well, this one's just generally good, so that that's why that's in the build, and, yeah, you, you could save a little bit of money on a worse card, but, in my opinion, is like paying twenty extra for a really nice twenty dollars or like thirty dollars extra for a nicer model of the GPU. In my opinion, makes a lot of sense because, like, if anything is going to be loud, like, because we've already got rid of the the stock cooler of the thirty six hundred, right? So the last thing we need now is also a lot like having a loud GPU. In my opinion. Right, because if you want the the whole build to be quiet, well, it's like, well, the CPU needs to be quiet, and then the GPU needs to be quiet, and it's like, if you buy a louder GPU, then nothing else you do is gonna fix the noise um, at that point. So, yeah, that's a really nice 5600 XT, um, and then for the case, we have the the Focus Design uh, G Mini, which uh, I, it's just like I throw it into all of these builds because it's cheap. It's $55, um, which actually it was a bit more expensive at the time of do making the list, but that was yesterday that I made the list. But yeah, so $55 case. Um, it's micro ATX. It'll fit your micro ATX board. It'll fit the GPU and the cooler. Um, so yeah, um, why wouldn't you just use that? So it's kind of that, like, I really don't see a point in spending a lot on a case, and in fact, if I was trying to, uh, like, cost optimize this build further, um, like, if you don't have kids, or pets, or idiot roommates, um, I mean, I guess you yourself could always be an idiot, but, uh, like, we're, we're gonna, you know, assume that you aren't, and you probably don't believe you're an idiot even if you are, right? So... <laughs> So, um, you're, you're not gonna, you're not, like, you're not gonna apply that criteria to yourself anyway, but, so, assuming that you don't have Id kids, pets, idiot roommates, um, you already live in a box, why would you buy a smaller box to put the computer in? Why can't the computer live in the same box that you live in, right? Unnecessary expense, $50 on a case, get rid of the case, just run the computer on top of the motherboard box, it doesn't care. It still ultimately shares the same roof that you do. It doesn't need its own smaller box to live in. Um, and then for the power supply, I went with the Be Quiet Pure Power 11 because that's actually a good power supply. Um, 400 watt, 80 plus gold. Like the 80 plus gold wasn't really a deciding factor. It's just that um, all of the other PSUs currently at around this price range are like, but I don't even know that these are good. Like, I, I'm not aware of reading any reviews for them, whereas the Pure Power, like, I couldn't find a, one specifically for the 400 watt Pure Power 11, but the higher power models are, like, they get good reviews, so I'm uh, hoping that, like, Be Quiet hasn't, like, changed the OEM for the 400 version. Um, I, I'm, like, I'm really kind of annoyed that, like, power supply reviews have sort of dropped off the, off the map, because, um, uh, yeah, admittedly, these days it's much harder to get really terrible power supplies, but it's still, it's like, I'd like to know that I'm buying the most cost-effective power supply for a specific price point. I'm just like that. But, yeah, power supply choices right now are atrocious, and the build doesn't pull a lot of power, right? So it doesn't make sense to me, like, we're not say like, if we went with this PSU, I don't know if it's good or if it's bad, but we're not really saving any money. We're not going to benefit from having 50, another extra 50 watts. Like, this build, that CPU, even if you hammer it with an overclock, is going to top out at around 100 watts. The GPU is a sub-200 sub watts stock, and if you overclock it, you might get it up to... I don't know, 250. But the thing is, if you're hitting full power on the GPU, you're probably not going to be hitting full power on the CPU at the same time. So, a 400 watt PSU for a build like this is completely, you know, acceptable. Actually, you'd have to get the GPU all the way up to like 300 watts of power consumption, which 
you should be able to do like that that is probably possible but i don't think most people would be doing that with their 5600 xt um so yeah like that that's not really like yes technically you could max out this power supply practically speaking you shouldn't really be doing that um so the 400 watt psu is perfectly adequate for this build right here that's that's not an issue and um yeah, like, there's just no benefit, like, if we went down to, like, we don't need a 600 watt 80 plus, like, that's not even an 80 plus bronze, that's just an 80 plus, so that is actually significantly less efficient at that point, um, and also the higher, uh, like, idle efficiency might end up being worse, because you end up, like, the funny thing is, if you idle really low power, your, your idle efficiency ends up being really awful if you have an unnecessarily big PSU, um, so, yeah, and then it's like, I could have maybe considered, like, the Corsair CV, but that's an 80 plus bronze, 450, we don't need the extra power handling capacity, uh, and we save seven bucks. Like, um, um, no, <laughs> like, just, no, we don't need the extra power, um, let, let's get the Be Quiet Pure, Pure Power 11, because that's actually a nice PSU, it's semi-modular, this is not modular at all, and semi-modular, in my opinion, actually makes the most sense, because realistically, how many times are you not going to have the 24-pin power connector plugged into your power supply, right? Or a 8-pin power connector for your CPU. How, how often are you not going to have that plugged in? Never. So it doesn't make sense for the 8-pin or the 24-pin to be modular. Like, ugh, you know, or more like it's completely unnecessary for those two cables to be modular, at least in my opinion. Um, I guess maybe if you're doing, like, custom cables, then, yeah, but, you know, that's... It's like, whatever. Um, so that's why the, the 400 watt power, su power supply, because, yeah, there's not really a lot of great choices at the moment. Um, so that kind of sucks. Is that seriously just an 80 plus, not an 80 plus bronze? It is surprising. Admittedly, that's, that's also like $52. Like, I was seriously considering this, but I couldn't find any, like, reliable reviews for this. So I was, was like, okay, you know what? No. Um, we're, we're gonna go with, with the Pure Power 11. Um, so, that's the build, that's like the sort of very nice build, in my opinion. And then, if, like, things that I would upgrade on this, honestly, I would probably just upgrade the memory a little bit. Um, because the CPU, like, the CPU doesn't need a, you don't need a better motherboard for overclocking the CPU. You don't need a better cooler for overclocking the CPU, because we've already taken care of that. Um... And it's like, yeah, you might want more memory or you want might fa you might want faster memory. So go find yourself a cheap kit of B die and stick that in there. Then of course you could always upgrade the GPU to like a 5700, 5700 XT, uh 2070 Super maybe. Yeah, actually 2070 Super. By the time you get to a 2080 Super, I would strongly suggest like you maybe should be looking at an Intel build, maybe. Depends on what you play. Um but um uh, yeah, so basically, like, just this, and then, then d actually just dump more budget into the RAM and, and GPU at this point. Like, I don't see the the point in really changing any... Well, at, like, at some point, you'll have to upgrade the power supply if you're going to be going up to a high, better better GPU. Like, by the time you hit, like, the 5700 XT, you might want to get a better PSU, especially if you're overclocking. If you're at stock, though, then you don't really need to do anything with the power supply anyway. Um, but, uh... Yeah, so that's the sort of, uh, this is a really nice build in my opinion, I like it. Um, I'd get rid of the case. <laughs> I'd throw the case out. But uh, anyway, what, what else do we have here? So next uh, we have the uh, sort of more cost-optimized version where I've dropped the CPU down to a 3300X, I've thrown out the cooler. Um, so that's, you know, well, the 3300X, I think that still comes with the... Uh, load more. Can we find? It? Oh, they're only showing the Ryzen fives, aren't they? That's r really annoying. Um, no. Why do websites all like? I'm so annoyed with all of the pop-ups that we get on websites these days. Though and AMD's is not the worst, but I went to some like uh tech site for a review, and they're like, my God. That was the worst website I've ever looked at. Okay, yeah, so this also comes with the right stealth. But this is a quad-core 
not a six core. So the cooler should have less of a problem dealing with this. Also, this has, if I'm not mistaken, like not as much L3 cache as a 3600, which also like L3 cache pulls a decent amount of power as well. So that'll be easier to cool because there's just less CPU to cool. Um, so we don't need the big cooler anymore, in my opinion. Uh, still on the B550M AORUS Pro because it's a perfectly good motherboard. It's a little bit unnecessary for a CPU like this, but hey, maybe down the line you want to upgrade and this is a perfectly good motherboard, even up to like an 8 core. And if you're going to run a 12 core or a 16 core at stock settings, it should still handle that just fine. It's just like I wouldn't overclock a 12 core or a 16 core on this motherboard, but stock settings, sure. Um... Now, for the memory, still the same memory kit. There's just, like, it does because here's the thing. If you get, start going for even cheaper memory kits, you start ending up with, like, 3,200 kits, and it's just, like, they're not necessarily, like, you're, you're not guaranteed to be able to overclock those properly. And with Ryzen, it's pretty important to get your FCLK speed up to the limit, right? And then these should have good headroom for some amount of sub-timing optimization as well. The primaries probably won't go anywhere, but they're not like they're important but they're not the end all be all of memory tuning so in fact the the kind of like especially if you got like cjr or djr you can drop the trfc a lot you can drop the trrds you can drop the tfaw you can run um well tcwl isn't going anywhere but um actually if you got cjr or djr in that you should be able to drop down to like 3600 16 19 19 or something but uh yeah, so that, that kit is, like, that, that kit's just staying because I don't really see a better option. We're still keeping the same SSD. And then for the GPU, I went with the PNY uh, 1660 Super 6 gig for this because this um, is the cheapest 1660 Super I could find at the time of making this list. And the alternative doesn't have any heat pipes in the cooler. So, <laughs> you know, it's not really that, like... GPU heatsink... Wait, what? When did this get this cheap? How did I miss that? I mean, this is still 229, so you might actually want to consider that or this. But, ev eh, wait a minute. This is Asus. Did they actually put heat pipes? No, that's just a block of aluminum by the looks of things. Um, okay, that that's probably a bad idea. But, uh, like, the the thing is... Like, the, at the time that I was making the list, this was the only other card that was in this price range, and the, the this is an awful heatsink. Like, absolutely awful heatsink. So, no. Um, whereas the PNY card that's that ended up in the list, like, that actually has a decent heatsink. Yes, it's a single fan, but it's still a, de like, it's a much better heatsink than the, the Phoenix card from Asus. And then I'm not sure about the, about the Tough Gaming OC, but that should be okay, and the Ventus XS OC, that should also be okay like if it has heat pipe like generally speaking if the heatsink like basic heatsink hierarchy rules no heat pipes is worse than having any amount of heat pipes even if the heat pipes aren't great like heat pipes are really good oh i know why i missed it because this has a bunch of rebates on it whereas the pny is just naturally 229 Right? Yeah, this is just a really cheap 1660 Super, whereas this is a more expensive card, but right now it has some, some deals going for it. Um, so, yeah, the PNY is probably going to be the, the card that you're more reliably able to going to be able to find at that 229. Though, is it? Two, three, well, okay, so roughly about the same situation as the, the Ventus from MSI or the Tough from Asus, but still, like, that should be a solid 1660 Super option. Um, then for the case, we have a fractal design focus G because the same logic we had it before. It's a, it's a box that you can put your parts into it. Um, I don't really see the point of having the box, but sure. Um, it's a cheap box. Uh, it's like the, the thing is the case does not make your system faster. Um, so yeah. And with these low power parts, like I wouldn't be too worried about the, the cooling capabilities of the case either. Though you could always get something that's really choked off, which this isn't. It has a mesh front and it has two fans. So if you think you might have like an exhaust issue, you might want to play around with the fan positioning. So yeah, um, that's how that ended up in the list. Um, and then we have the Be Quiet power supply again, because like, yes, technically this build pulls even less power than this one does. But I can't like there's no better power supplies like the, the cheaper power supplies get significantly worse. I don't see a reason why you'd want to do that. 
Um, uh, you'd still have some headroom on up for upgrades with this. And then we get to this build right here, which this is the cheapest build. Funnily enough, I think this is the one that at stock is going to... Actually, no. Uh, well, actually, yes. Yes, if you don't do any overclocking, this right here should be the most power-hungry version of this build uh, out of these three builds. Because this has an RX 580, and RX 580s are not power efficient. But they're really good value for money. And it has, uh, and the 3600 and the 3300X have the same TDP spec from AMD. So I'm going to assume that the PPT limit for both of those CPUs is the same. And so at full load on the entire system, this should have 60, or actually, I don't think the 65 watt CPUs, I'm not sure. This is really annoying with AMD's TDP spec because like the 3700X is a 65 watt TDP, but the actual power limit of the CPU is 88 watts because, you know, AMD just, doesn't under like amd um like it, it's really annoying like with intel cpus technically intel does something similar but it's like if your motherboard is bad enough it will actually well or well technically if your motherboard is bad enough even on a ryzen cpu it'll drop down to the actual tdp so cpu manufacturers need to start respecting physics or something there yes they should start res respecting physics like if you have a power limit and it's higher than your specified TDP, maybe list that instead of your TDP, you know? Because I, I don't care what the freaking thermal design power is. It's not, that's not an actual physical value of anything. It's Im imaginary marketing speak. Um, anyway, because like the thing is, like a 3700X is not a 65 watt CPU, it's an 88 watt CPU. And I'm assuming the 3600 still has that 88 watt power limit. But with the 3300X, I'm not sure, does this actually have a 65 watt limit? Or does it have the 88 watt limit? Because there's a chance that with a quad core, you can't even hit 88 watts. Like, just, just think about it. Like, you need a lot of voltage to be shoving 22 watts into each core of a Ryzen CPU. So logically, if you have a quad core, uh, this might not even hit its own power limit. Um, but I'm not sure. Maybe this actually has a 65 watt power limit, which is quite different from an 88 watt power limit, isn't it? But again, AMD just... Well, AMD, like Intel, just has no respect for physics. Um, luckily, well, a AMD GPUs don't know how to measure power, so that's a completely different issue. But, uh, like, at least, it, like, NVIDIA is the best. Like, they have a power limit. And that's also their TDP. And the GPU has all the necessary circuitry to ensure that it stays at that power limit. Um, whereas with the, like, Intel CPUs and AMD CPUs, technically speaking, there is circuitry for monitoring the power consumption. Um, just sometimes the motherboards aren't properly calibrated, which is just great. Um, and then other times, and, and, but assuming your motherboard is actually correctly configured by the manufacturer, um, the CPU still doesn't actually respect the TDP because it has a completely different actual power limit, which is just like, this is dumb. It's really dumb. Anyway, so yeah, this could actually end up being the sort of most power hungry iteration of the build, even though it's the cheapest because of the RX 580, because RX 580s are pretty damn power hungry. Um, and that's basically it. So now this has dropped down to the B550M Aorus Elite. This is not a great board. I mean, like in terms of IO, it's actually perfectly good, but I think think you no longer have Q... Oh, no, they managed to still squeeze Q-Flash onto it. That is impressive. Um, so you still get Q-Flash. Um, but, yeah, this board is... Does this even have any troubleshooting LEDs? No, of course not. Why would it have troubleshooting LEDs? Who, who even wants to overclock memory on their Ryzen system, right? Like, nobody does that. <laughs> nobody overclocks memory on Ryzen. Which, actually, that's... In the grand scheme of things, that's probably mostly true. Most people probably don't even enable their XMP profiles. Um, so why would they need troubleshooting LEDs? They're running at JDEC. It's never going to fail. Um, anyway, uh, yeah. So, you know, the board gets a bit more stripped down, mostly in the VRM department, which, like, with the B550M Pro, I would be pretty confident upgrading uh, even up to a 12 or a 16 core as long as you didn't decide to overclock. With this, on the other hand, uh, yeah, a hundred. If you like the hundred and forty-four watt power limit of a thirty-nine fifty X is probably going to be way too much for this VRM. 
So with this board, you should start losing multi-core performance because with a better board, your VRM won't overheat um, and your CPU won't power throttle. So that's kind of the, the main reason I don't like this board. Also, this board's not that much cheaper. Like, yes, it's $20 cheaper, but you could throw the case out and save 50 <laughs> Right? Like, that's the way I look at it. Throw the case out and you can spend 50 bucks more on the motherboard or more 50 on the CPU. Um, but uh, yeah, at this point, like 3300X and the Elite is going to be fine if you ever upgrade to like a 6 core or maybe an 8 core. It depends on your airflow, but the 8 core might work depending on the, the airflow situation. Um, the GPU RX 580, just at this this price point, you're not going to find a better gaming GPU. Yes, it's really power hungry, but um, these are also really overclockable, at which point they get even power hungrier, um, which is not great news for the PSU. Like, you can make an RX 580 pull 300 watts very easily. Um, in fact, I think the RX 580 in my daily system probably averages around 280 watts with the overclock that I run on it. Um, so, yeah, uh, but, you know, it's a fast GPU, it's a cheap GPU, it's just not very power efficient, and, like, yes, you could go for more power efficient options, and I went specifically for the, the Gigabyte card, because this is the cheap, one of the cheaper options for RX 580s. So if we look at RX 580s, um, we go by price. So this one's, oh man, that right now it's the cheapest. So this one's actually decent. This looks like the heatsink is not okay. Um, I actually, so this board, like I've heard some complaints for this GPU from other people. I think it's probably fine, but I don't have proof of that. So while person, like if I was doing the build myself, I'd probably stick this in it. Um, I'm not gonna go and recommend that. Uh, this, on the other hand, looks really cut down, but the heatsink might still be okay. It's just like, this, this is a really, like, I don't think I've ever seen a review of this card, and so it's just like, eh, you're not going in the list, because I don't actually know how this, how this behaves. It's also somewhat more expensive than the Gigabyte card, and the Gigabyte card, I mean, that one's also not exactly incredible, but I think I've found some reviews for this one, and it's not too loud. Um... So, yeah, this, on the other hand, just awful. Like, just no. Um, I don't like the PCB on that. This, actually, this might be on that same PCB as this. So that, yeah, anyway. Um, and now we're starting to get into, like, expensive RX 580s. And if we're going to go for an expensive RX 580, well, I'm actually not sure which one I would go. There's not a lot of great choices right now. Um, mm-hmm-hmm. <laughs> No. It's like the nice RX 580s would be something like, well, this, but that's not in stock. <laughs> like, if you replace the thermal paste on one of those, those are really good. The heatsink's great. Um, my personal daily, like, my daily system runs on a power color Red Devil Golden Sample. I got really on, like, it's a golden sample, which is supposed to have, like, a better binned core because it comes with a higher boost clock out of the box. My core is trash. Like, really bad. So, yeah, that, that went great, didn't it? I paid, I think, 10 or 20 quid extra for the golden sample, and it's like, and the core is awful. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Um, oh, no, you could go for a Strix, like a regular Strix, but that's like 280, so that doesn't make sense. So, yeah. Anyway, so that's like the, the budget B550 build option, though I guess most people probably don't care for my thoughts on GPU GPU selection. It's mostly like what motherboard, what memory, and maybe what power supply. <coughs> anyway, so yeah, that's the, that's the part, like that's the builds I would do with the B550, like budget B550 builds I would do right now. Unfortunately, like, B550 currently still doesn't have, like, the proper B450 re replacement boards, um, which it's gonna get eventually. Like, there are B550 boards that are basically, like, B450s, and they're just kind of light. Um, right, so we have, like, you have, wait, no, that's not B550, that's B450, damn it. So, like, ASRock has this... Yeah, this thing, which, uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is supposed to be $80 when it comes back into stock. Um, which, uh, let me just see. Oh, no available. 
well, whatever. That board is supposed to be like $80 when it comes back in stock. Um, this is supposed to be like 115 This is supposed to be like 100 So, yeah, DS3H is supposed to be 100 This is basically the Elite board with a smaller heatsink. That's, that's the main thing. So, yeah. Anyway, so that, that's the builds. Um, oh, and this one's now missing the, the freaking CPU. Wait, let me get it. I mean, missing the motherboard. So I'm going to put li put links to all of the, the parts lists down in the description below. And also, I'll include some of the reviews and, well, some of the references that I used for, for this video. Not necessarily, uh, actually, well, probably all of them, actually. So, yeah, I'm going to include references to, to why I chose specific parts down in the description. And yeah, that is it for the video. So thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. And uh, if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below, which allows you to support me directly. And then there's the uh, AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch, and that achieves the exact same thing as the Patreon, but you get merch in return. So yeah, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching and goodbye.